And that was not going to come off. He's clipped Jervis Ward. Aldo De Poli, Paul Stubber, watch him light it up in the yellow car. He wobbles and bobbles and walks it off the line, gets the power down as the whole historic touring Garfield gets away very nicely indeed. We thought Stubber might charge his way through. These two in front have played a game with him. They've blocked his path through to P1 here, but Allen. Gives it up to Aldo De Pioli. Paul Stubber will follow him through. Have a look at Andy Williams loving these conditions. Round the outside of Darren Hossack in his RX2 goes Peter McNiven. And he's going to round up Michael Michelli as well before he exits turn two. There's a little bit of telltale smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe of the McNiven RX2. But at the moment, Darren Hossack has to give way to the other RX2 to be the fastest one of the Mazdas on track. There's Hossack right in behind. That is Miles. So we're looking at a couple of, uh, it's a six cylinder and a couple of 12-way Mazda rotaries in the mix there as well. And there's Muhlerman, that magic looking black Mustang. If you're gonna have a Mustang, be the dastardly one out there and have it all black, every single thing of it painted black and shiny black indeed it is. Look at that number 43, the 46 Mustang right in behind there as well. That's Leo Tobin. Have a look at this, McNiven. Talk about weighing in on the heavyweights here. 55 there is uh, Ian Muir. And there he is, Peter McNiven. Michael Michelli in behind there. Guy that knows how to win races here in Victoria. Darren Hossack had the car jamming in third gear yesterday. I'm not gonna say he's having that same trouble now, but certainly these bigger capacity cars become a problem once these uh, little Mazdas point their nose down the straight here, have a look at Michael Michelli. He'll light it up in the big Ford. Two blue Mustangs line astern with each other. There's Darren Hossack in the 18. Lifting left front wheels yesterday coming out of Siberia. The guy that knows how to place a car on a racetrack to uh, get the best advantage of it. Paul Stubber leads lap number one. A 1.3 second lead over Aldo De Poli. Then we have Craig Allen, the first of the Mustangs. The 25 of Moyle coming through there as well. And that's uh, the Chevy Camaro SS. We get a great shot of that magnificent looking Australian built GTR XU1 Tirana. The first of the giant killers these were back in that uh, supercar era. The very first era, I mean, when uh, the GTHOs were dominating. Holden came out and with the magician-like effects of Harry Firth, they started winning races with these wooden Tiranas. Triple carburetors on a six-pack. Great drivers, Bond, Brock, and Harry Firth combined for uh, some fantastic victories in those little Tiranas. And they were fighting like the Camaros and the Mustangs that we're seeing here. In particular, it was the GTHOs that really did reset Australian touring car racing back in that era. Have a look at that HQ coming around here as well. Car number 45, magnificent looking car there of Nathan Gordon. And he does a uh, terrific job in the HQ GDS Monaro. Tough looking rig, as is the uh, Camaro in front of him there. The 68, they both go streaming on through. That's Jeff Monday. The American muscle, the Aussie muscle there, and the Coupe Mustang. Sorry, the Coupe uh, Monaro. Just cars emblazoned across the front window of all the historic touring cars. And of course, this weekend, they'll all have enjoyed a great meal at the Isola de Capri. Pyarch again assembling a, a great amount of sponsors, the uh, Yokohama Traction Tire Center in Roville, the Ramada Resort here at Phillip Island. Sold a Capri Cool Drive for all of their great auto parts stores around the country and growing, and Speco VHT for their loyal support for many, many years of Island Magic here with the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. And we have got arguably the best display of cars for our last race of the season here in Victoria. The historic touring cars have bought a, an immense field here this weekend. Should be congratulated. 30 plus cars for uh, historic touring cars here at Phillip Island this weekend. The 19 looking to the inside here to get a move done. 
on the 46 there, and uh, that is Leo Tobin, guy that loves GM product. But, uh, the 46 here, this is a Mustang. And doing a good job. Oh, here's a couple of Mazdas ganging up on the 55 out there at the moment of Ian Muir. And we hear that scream, 1.3 litres, 12 A's. Either side of him here. This would be frustrating and Mustang owner no end on it. Yes, Nick Nibbert goes wide, pinches up a break there, and Muir goes through. Hossack just trying to get through there. He's lifting a paw off the ground and uh, continues on, really stiffly sprung on the back of that RX2 there. Lifts the paw up off the ground, lets it float in the air for a moment there. Probably wants all four on the ground so we can hang on around the very long turn 12 here, because now Miles is going to range up onto the back of them here. This is Glenn Miles in the number 16 charge up. The two Mazdas out side by side. There's smoke coming out the side of the 13. Ah, oh, the Mustang. That's had a massive lock up as well. Where does it see him on track? A big pinch up of the brakes there of the Mustang in front of these guys. That's Ian Muir. And have a look at Hossack. He's gonna go round the outside of Pete McNiven. No love lost between these two Mazda contenders. It's the business end of the weekend. Darren Hossack wants to get out of ninth and get into eighth. And they want to get out after Mewitt there as well. He had a massive lock up into turn one there. They haven't been able to catch him. There he is in the number 55, just ahead of them here. Power down out of these two RX2s, the screaming Mazdas. Everybody loves a screaming Mazda, don't they? The number 13 comes out of the bottom corner there. Adrian Moyle in this magnificent looking black with the uh, SS badge on the front and those silver stripes over the bonnet and over the boot lid, out over the back bobtail as well. Have a look at the 59 of Andrew Williams. He's all over the back of it. Frustration must be uh, the feeling inside the 59 at the moment drags all over the back of the 25. They point these things at the straight and like it has been for so many, many years of racing these cars. Adrian Moyle opens it up. 5.7 litres at his disposal. 3.3 at Andrews. And the uh, Camaro just gets another four or five car lengths around. Andy Williams is not is not dismayed by it at all. He just means he has to work harder from here all the way back around to the top of uh, the course again to push home the advantage. This is fourth and fifth on the road. Paul Stubber leading the way, has got four laps completed in the yellow Camaro. Fastest lap of 146.37. Paul Stubber does hold the lap record here at a 145.31. Takes about a full second off his own lap record out there at the moment. Oh boy, Adrian blocking up that right front in the 25. Camaro, have a look at that. This is going to wheels, wheels spin out of Andy Williams' car. He had a bit of opposite lock there. He smells the blood in the water with the Camaro now understeering. Have a look at the push on the Camaro coming out of Siberia. Switches to oversteer on horsepower. Leaves the number 11 on the road behind him. A couple of GT HOs. Who doesn't like a look at a GTHO? Have a look at the size of the bags on the back of that number four car there as well of Brett Hodgkin. And we're talking uh, 21st on the road here, Jervis Ward just in front of these guys in the uh, Creative Parrot Falcon Sprint. There he is, the number 26, Jervis Ward. He tips it in, the four of Hodgkin, followed through by the 52 of Colin Larson in his GTHO. They really did change the landscape of Australian motoring. These four-door, big, heavy, fast cars that came out of the Ford Motor Company here in Australia and changed the careers of many, many racing drivers as well over the journey. And uh, they still are driven extremely well by the likes of these guys in historic touring cars. Just under seven minutes remaining in the 2023 iteration of Island Magic. 31, leading the way, this is Paul Stubber. He locks up a left front, there's no pressure.
from behind for Paul, but his pressure bullet is between his ears. It's in his own helmet. He applies the pressure to himself. He's got four bonnet pins, not two on the front of this car, just to make sure the bonnet doesn't come up. And again, he spins the wheels coming out of uh, Siberia. Aldo Poli is terrific. Hang on here. Ah, oh, look at Stubber. He's giving us a bit of a demonstration of how much he likes to move the 31 around out on the track. It is a greasy racetrack out there at the moment. He would have a handful, but this is how Stubber likes it. He likes the car to move around. He likes to be able to just explore the, uh, the limits of adhesion. Aldo Pioli, Di Pioli there as well comes in. Ferris has gone to the pit lane in the number 19. So he has uh, removed himself from the further competition. Brett Harris in the Holden Toronto XU1 is just uh, trickling down pit lane at the moment. And uh, I'm not sure why he has come to the lane, but uh, certainly just slowly trundling down the lane there. Didn't see any black flags or anything like that that he might be serving a drive through. No, sadly, the number 19 is turning into the back of the paddock. So that's a real shame. Brett Ferris in the Holden Tirana XU1, not taking any further part. Have a look at that. Oh no, the 52 right in the middle of the corner down there at turn four. Here comes the, uh, on replay here, is Jervis Ward. Whoa, this was a big look, a really big look and a lunge. And that was not going to come off. He's clipped Jervis Ward too, so damage on that beautiful Falcon sprint. Colin Larson, not sure what he thought he was going to achieve there unless he had run out of brakes down into turn four there, but clipping the uh, Falcon sprint, the creative parrot Falcon sprint there of Jervis Ward. And that's a shame. Have a look at this, the uh, Mustang blasting through on Darren Hossack, the 55, and Darren saying, yeah, nah, you're not doing that. Like an AFL footballer, yeah, nah, get back behind me. I've got this in the number 18. And that GTHO just on the outside of the corner here, we're going to have safety car. a safety car. Yep, that uh, I'm afraid I think was going to be the inevitable, Darren. I've just come back from uh, from downstairs having a chat to the Formula V drivers after that last race, but uh, just coming in to see the uh, the stricken GDHO Falcon after the contact with Jervis Ward. Is, uh, looks like there's some smoke coming yeah, off the back of the... Is that the Jervis Ward that's car? That's sad, too. Jervis's car yep. is a beautiful-looking, beautifully prepared racing car, and now he's got smoke billowing off that uh, right front tyre in the left hooker, the Falcon Sprint. That's a shame. I really didn't think that gold um, gold GDHO was going to haul up there. It looked like it might have been a brake issue, and he, uh, he certainly lifted his hand in apology there to Jervis. So uh, uh, here here we're is. coming together. Here we go. Here it is again. He's a long, long way back. Looks to the inside here. Bit of a lock-up. Bit more of a little lock up there and then a lock up on the left front. Wow, well, maybe he thought he could plunge down there and get a, a big dive bomb done. I think Jervis saw him coming, but he just wasn't quite wide enough at the uh, turn number four. So he realised that something was going to happen, just didn't know it was going to be that bad, unfortunately. You just don't like to see these old racing cars. No. They're hard enough to uh, find parts for and keep them running without having uh, contact. So we do, it is a very rare occurrence that we do see contact in historic touring cars. All right, well, what this does is that this obviously compacts the field up. The Racer Industries Sparco safety car has been deployed. We uh, thank Racer Industries for uh, the use of their vehicle for the safety car here this weekend. Uh, Racer Industries certainly making their presence felt right around the country in that racing hardware scene. Of course, Cool Drive in the general stream of automotive parts, but racing, Racer Industries, Ryan McLeod company that he uh, instigated all those years ago and has uh, now into the hands of the Blanchard family and they have gone and added an extra impetus behind that organisation. And uh, interesting to see them making that move into that motorsport uh, hardware field as well. And they uh, providing sponsorship for the Formula Fords and of course they're providing this safety car here this weekend in the Just Cars 
historic touring car race number three for the weekend. We're dramatically running out of time here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix. Wondering if they're actually going to be taking a bit too long to pull that car in. Oh, Paul Stubber again. Paul Stubber. Oh, oh and, and behind him as well, De Poli. They are both finding the, uh, I guess, the tyres are starting to say it's been a long season, guys. Why are you still torturing us? And look at that there again. <laughs> no, it's not just because of the weather either. That's yeah, they're having just some a fun with the fun. throttle. <laughs> they're having some fun with the throttle. We're uh, we're fast running out of, as you said, Darren, fast running out of time here. There's only two minutes left on the clock. They've actually had to call for a flatbed uh, tow to pick up the, uh, the, the GTHO Falcon from turn number four. So there it is being loaded onto the uh, Kev the Toey's flatbed. So we'd be lucky to probably get one more lap, I would say. It might be the old uh, club sprint to finish. Uh, as the, the Sparco and Racer Industries safety car leads them through turn number 10. They'll get across the line. There'll be still time on the clock, but of course, when the clock goes zero, it's uh, one lap after the clock goes zero. So be very lucky to uh, to get one more lap in, if not to uh, finish under safety cars. We're getting very close to the, the cutoff here of, uh, of 5 p.m., which is normally when all track activity has to cease at Phillip Island. Every now and again, they do get a little bit of an extension in extenuating circumstances, such as the wall repairs that we had to see take place after the unfortunate accident in the uh, the Formula Ford Duratec race, which was called off uh, in a similar vein to the way that uh, the Formula Open race last year it uh, was called off at the final event of the year, just because the uh, extenuating circumstances, too many cars off the circuit and uh, not enough time to, to get everybody back onto the right tyre and restart that race. So. Fortunately for Formula Ford, that uh, was the reason why that uh, has got zero results against it for race number three. And there's just 45 seconds left on the clock as the field streams past the uh, the chequered stripe. So uh, the flashing lights on the safety car there from Racer Industries. We thank them, of course, for their support right throughout this, uh, this weekend and uh, worthy motorsport people to be involved with if you're looking for anything that they certainly have amongst their product range. I guess one of the interesting things here for you and I, Steve, and those still here at the track, is that it's almost like a live parade now that we get to see some of these just amazing pieces of racing cars that, that people are still, I'm going to say, generous enough to bring to the track and just show us what touring car racing used to be like in the day. And uh, I'm pretty sure that back in the day they didn't have one lap screamers to the finish here. And that is going to fall into the hands of Paul Stubber. It's how he loves it. It's how he enjoys his motorsport. He's a, he's a, a guy that throws the mud up against the wall and races it to the ground. And he certainly does have a ripping time really enjoy watching the way Paul Stubber goes about it and we're going to have a ripping time to see how Pioli goes with him as well Safety and a guy car. that started on pole Craig Allen is right back in the thick of things here as well for one final lap do we get it yeah we are going to get it it says safety car in this lap at the bottom of the screen so it looks like we will get just the one last lap to uh, to round out not only the final event of the just cars historic touring cars for 2023 because this is the uh, the culmination of their racing season it's also the culmination of uh, island magic 2023 and uh, for a lot of uh, categories that uh, there's not much more racing left in the year if at all so attention's all going to be turning after this weekend's over to what does 2024 look like we know there's a few uh, calendars that are yet to be published for us things that uh, we've been a part of and been fortunate to be a part of this year with the Victorian State Race Series. Of course, the historic touring cars, like most of the categories here this weekend, stands for, uh, for Formula Open, have been a regular part of throughout the 2023 season. Still looks like all six tracks are, are going to be used again next year in, uh, in what capacity and on what dates is the, uh, the real question and uh, whether or not we're back here again with the uh, Blendline TV for Island Magic in, in 2024. All of those permutations have still got to be worked out throughout the off-season, but uh, what's definitely 
a certainty is the one last lap <laughs> that the historic touring cars have to finish out the season. Safety car wasn't even into pit lane and Paul Stubb has already hit the go pedal and uh, roars off into turn number 12 and going right with him. Aldo Di Paoli squirming Paul Stubber as he goes through turn number 12. The rear end of the Camaro disagreeing with the tyres that were underneath the rear axle and he's dragging Di Paoli with him off to turn one. Look at the margin that they've gone through after just a handful of corners. Big slide from Di Paoli going through turn number one. He's not given up hope of grabbing another one of these trophies to put in his trophy cabinet. Great vision here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix second to sign off on season 2023 here. Couldn't have thought of two more wild uh, competitors to get out there and show us how to do it and get it done in the wet. Massive understeering here for Aldo Pioli, but he stays with Paul Stubber, the guy that is famous for his amazing control of this silver, uh, sorry, of this yellow Camaro. He is doing a, a brilliant job out in front of this one. Tricky, tricky conditions. Plus 500 horsepower on board for these. And both of them from Western Australia doing such a good representation. They've got a long trip home, Steve, so they want to enjoy this last stuff. Uh, 4.9 Ks. They certainly do. They want to savour every minute of their time here at Phillip Island Grand Prix Circuit. They may have uh, not had a West Australian for the, uh, the other categories this weekend. Uh, turn around and taste the top step of the podium, but one of them will. That's the important thing. So Western Australia will have some silverware heading back to the, uh, the Western Seaboard. It's only going to be as a result of one of these two taking the top step of the podium, but uh, they'll be definitely happy to see them both uh, in Parc Ferme after this and congratulate each other on uh, what's been a very entertaining final lap. Watch out Opioli on the uh, Blendline TV highlights reel for season 2023. He is lighting it up, moving it around. Both of them squirming onto the straight here. Camaro, Camaro, Stubber, Pioli rounds it out for the historic touring cars here at Phillip Island for 2023. The rest of the field in their wake. And it'll be Allen in the uh, Mustang. Mustang. Andy Williams, the local guy, brings it in to P4. Adrian Moyle, Michael Michelli, Darren Hossack eventually home there in seventh place. Just given the horsepower race, Darren couldn't bring it to him. Ian Muir, Glenn Miles, Brent Trengove eventually into the 10 there as well. We go to Monday, Hodgkin rounding out the, uh, the top 12. And then it's Gordon Hepburn Muleman across the line. Historic touring cars leaving all of the excitement right to the end of the day here at Isle of Magic 2023. And, uh, well, it is a very, very misty, foggy, almost eerie silence that has taken place here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. There it is. Confirmation. Paul Stubber in the 31 takes the W over Aldo Pioli, Craig Allen, Andy Williams, Adrian Moore, Michael Michelli, Darren Hossack home in seventh place. Ian Muir, Glenn Miles, Brett Trengo, fastest lap to Stubber on a 146.37. There's Jeff Monday in the 68. Rodney Hodgkin, Nathan Gordon, Ray Hepburn, Peter Muleman in the Mustang in 15. Stephen Pillick is in the Tirana. Richard Hill in the uh, Cooper S there as well. Les Walmsley in the Cortina. Brett Hodgkin, Leo Tobin in the Mustang. John Harrison, Michael George, the final of our finishes home there. Jervis Ward sadly with damage. Colin Larson with damage. Peter McNiven withdrew from the uh, from the competition there as well. And they were the starters in the last race from the uh, the weekend. Brett Ferris, Dalson, Baird Collins, and Moyle. And that, everybody, is uh, Island Magic for 2023.